everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited to be recapping episodes two and three of season two of The Way Home. Very exciting. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Sari Cohen is here. Sari, thanks so much. Yay. Yay. Thanks for having me back, Rachel. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so this is your first time coming on for to recap The, the Way Home. And uh, so how did you enjoy season one? Were you a fan? How did you get into it? Oh, I'm so excited. Well, I got to do interviews with the cast for season one. So, and you know, we talked about this in, in our other recap of being one of our favorite shows of 2023. Yeah. Yeah. So was super excited. Got to screen a bunch of episodes right after that, gearing yeah. up for season two. Um, and then just got to sit down with the cast yeah. again. So oh, so jealous. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, I, it's such a good show. You know, mm-hmm. it's like the all the fun of time traveling and all the love of relationships it just combines the best of everything definitely hallmarks well one of their best shows yeah yeah (laughs) what do you think makes it really stand out as a special show you know to me it's the nostalgia factor i'm Mm -hmm. the 90s kid so i I love the tie-ins i love that it is multi-generational you know you get to see just these three women and their relationships and where they're at in life. And yeah, the tie into the nineties, I mean, the music alone, like it's just, yeah, it's a little bit like unsettling to me sometimes. Cause I'm like, I'm not ready yeah, yeah. for my high school years to already be sort of nostalgia. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I, I, <laughs> there's, but it is, it's such a fun show to watch. It's such a fun show to talk about. And, oh, did you notice this detail? Did you notice this detail? Did you see the Almanac said 1814? Did you see that they had the same thing on the fireplace, you know, or whatever? And uh, I think that, that that's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. There's not that many shows like that anymore that you can, like, talk about in a water cooler kind of way. Like, the last one that I can remember was WandaVision having that same kind of a thing of, like, oh, look at that era and what's going on and, and the, you know, figuring out the mystery of it all. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's a good mystery. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. really exciting. It is yeah. one of those shows that is just, there really isn't anything else like it on mm-hmm. television, and it is very exciting. Do you feel like you gained any new sort of appreciation or sort of intrigue in in interviewing the cast? Uh, something that's surprised yeah. you? Well, I've I've always been a big Andy McDowell fan. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, growing up in the nineties, yeah. um, and Kyler as well. Like it, it just is really cool. Um, and I've I've interviewed Evan as well for the magazine. I love how they are all musically inclined. I mean, I think that's one thing on this show that's really special is like they really are not only the great actors, but like super talented. Yeah. So I was kind of hoping Andy McDowell was going to get a little music time of her Did own. She sang? I didn't even yes, know she sang. She totally sang. Oh she my tried- gosh. In the movie Michael, I don't know if you remember the movie Michael uh-huh. years ago with John Travolta, but she sang. And that was like uh-huh. one of the cool things I had her and Sadie paired. And so she had mentioned that like, yeah, they were trying to get her to maybe sing a little something. And I was like, you guys need a music collab. You, you oh all need to do some kind of like musical episode or the <laughs> way home, you know, musical concert or something. <laughs> Very I cool. That. Right? <laughs> yeah. It would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. that's so cool that you got to interview them. Uh, well, uh, and I have gotten, I, I talked to Sadie and I talked to Jefferson Brown, who plays Colton. So that was really fun. Ooh. And I've been interviewed Heather Conkle, who was one of the writers, years and years and years ago. Awesome. I interviewed her. So she's awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, so episode two, season two, the little summary that they have is Dell considers the future of Landry Farm. Cat searches for answers through the past. Alice tries to make peace with Elliot. So what did you think overall of this episode? Oh, it it was a really good episode. I think they're easing us into this season nicely. Mm -hmm. A lot of things unfolding and a lot of good, um, not only character development, but the relationships between the characters we're getting to see really start to build and where our minds are really starting to go. I mean, at least for me, I'm just, I'm, Elliot's Mm -hmm. playing a bigger 
role in in the mystery mm-hmm. for me now. Yeah. Like kind of yeah. Yeah. How <laughs> do you theories. think that so they've done this thing where they have these sort of Im- I don't, imaginary or retellings that they do uh where Elliot will be talking to uh to Colton or you know kind of a thing happening how do you feel like that's working I I think they're doing everything beautifully I think mm-hmm. um their casting of the characters I they've done very well and even from the interviews um Evan Williams actually said it's really cool to he kind of uses that as a cue as to where to go mm-hmm. with his character. Like they, they pay close attention. Um, but yeah, I definitely think, especially with him, there's more than meets the eye there. I mean, I, I kind of am getting the feeling that like there's, there are things that uh-huh. m- might be rewritten for them in the present. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I feel like Elliot is hiding something right? because, uh, because he's so cynical and bitter and you know he says that uh that you and your mom jumped into the lake and things went south for me in my life he's real upset shocker Mm -hmm. (laughs) he says shocker like what he's so cynical what happened right well and you can you could start to see why i mean i get it but it's also there's definitely a piece missing you know definitely something there that that we've yet to uncover. You know? Seems like he's very resentful of the fact that he can't time travel. I think that's part of it is that he, uh, these women keep changing his life, but he can't control it at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, he's definitely hanging on to the fact of like, he, like he can't control. He had no say over his future. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's, fighting for this control now yeah. um but also he he loved cat so much and like now he's got the opportunity to make a life with her and then he's not doing it Kat, like you waited your what? whole life for this you, yeah. you even with some kind of certainty knew it was gonna happen because mm-hmm. like you had to have known that it was eventually gonna happen so yeah, my I've got all kinds of theories. Like there's going to be I, either Alice or Cat is going to try to put something right in the past to make Elliot stay in the present. I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. I'm guessing. Ho ho ho! We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Well, and so then he claims, oh, I never thought about Jacob or the dog traveling, time traveling. I'm like, what? And and then uh, she just says, fine, you have no right to be mad at her. I'm going to find mom on my own. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that part, that part, like, okay, I could, I could get the dog theory, right? But Jacob, that of was, kind of, but, right, that would have been my first guess it was yeah. like, of course, he time traveled, you know, yeah. of course, now that we know that it exists, that would have been mm-hmm. my first. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so do we think, the, do you think that Colton knew about the pond? Yes, yeah. 100%. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. He says here. He says nothing. There's nothing like Landry soil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's something going on. There. Yeah. You know what my guess is? 
my guess is that he actually traveled back to try to change his past and ended up where they were in that past because it could have been worse. Like I, I feel like almost like the butterfly effect. You so know? he, do you think he's from another time? I think he, yes. I think that Colton in the past actually traveled back and tried to change things for his present. And, and that's why he ended up like that would make sense that right? why he recognized cat right and sacrificed before his he's, own life like before knew. he's dying he, yeah. he, with adult cat he yep. oh my gosh right so he could be from a different time period yep yeah yep. Yep. oh my gosh i think he's doing some that's wild. traveling of his own do you think the del knows about the pond that's a tough one because so, she's not by blood, so she probably can't use it. Oh, that's a good theory. I didn't even think about that. And, but if Colton knew about it. Well, the, but the dog also, and the, and the dog also <laughs> traveled. And technically, that's not blood either. Do we know that the dog traveled or just that the dog oh. was in the pond? Well. Because the dog went in the pond. Jacob went after the dog. And then they found the dog wet. I'm uh, assuming the dog traveled. I don't, de de some, definitely something's <laughs> up with Del too. It's fishy. And that whole thing she had with Colton, is, like, is it a dream? Is it not a dream? Like, yeah. I don't know. The dog couldn't have Landry blood. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> right? So if, if the that dog. That would break this whole thing up. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's not just Landry blood, and it's, it's true because Elliot hasn't traveled. And why wouldn't he have tried? Come to think about it, like mm -hmm. that we haven't seen yet. If he was, you mean so Elliot? Elliot yeah. did try, I think, didn't he try? Okay, but uh, but yeah, he can't use the pond, Elliot, and uh, and so I think that's part of why he's so bitter, resentful. Yeah, um, and uh, and so uh, then of course we got the cliffhanger in the pilot. I mean, the premiere of cat getting shot and so mm -hmm. we see this uh with her passed out in 1814 being taken care of and uh and so she didn't obviously didn't die from the 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 and uh and that you you keep her locked up so she can't get out and uh but she's in like a fever mm -hmm. and what do you think of that cliffhanger with her getting shot, that was pretty shocking. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't know how she was going to get out of that one. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's like... Wow, Wes. <laughs> right? And what was going on? Like, who are these people and how yeah. are they related to her? And like, yeah. yeah. I do have to say, for 2023, what's up with all the high-waisted jeans? <laughs> like, I... I'm just like these are beautiful women. Why? It's the most unflattering style. <laughs> I did not so even much. notice that at all. I'm like, <laughs> there's certain things that should never come back into style. We don't need to see high waisted pants. They look terrible <laughs> on everybody. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! So so Dell asks Elliot to help her with this business plan. She basically wants to kind of lease out the land to struggling new farmers. I think is is what yeah. she wants to do, and uh, so she like has this whole conversation with imaginary Colton, what uh, what he would have said, and uh, and uh, so. Yeah, the, I think they're doing about as good a job as they could of keeping Colton a character in the story, considering he's, you know, he died. Yeah. Which I was glad to see. Yeah, no, they he's such a good character. I I think it, you know, and Andy McDowell talked about this a little bit, too, in our interview of just, you know, that was her one true love. Imagine, mm -hmm. like, loving someone, you've got this one love your whole life, and that's all you know, and then... And then they're just gone. Like, how do you, how do you even begin to go on? So, yeah, I feel like he's just, he's, he's a large part of the heart of that show. And he's such uh -huh. a good character. And again, like, yeah, there's still such a mystery yeah. there that, 
I don't think he's yeah. any, he may be dead, but I don't think he's dead. Yeah, right. Yeah. So then we have Alice jumping again. She's back in 1999, and uh, Teen Elliot is there, and he says, "My life has fallen apart since you got here," and so he's already Mister Bitter, mm-hmm. the Teen Elliot. <laughs> so angsty yeah so 90s. Yeah, yes yes <laughs> 1999 was the last time i was truly happy mm. is what uh is what alice says and uh and then uh teen elliot says it's like i'm shipwrecked mm. <laughs> nowhere to go <laughs> yeah. um and then we have cat she's got this fever and uh and the guy says how do you know jacob landry uh, you're on the Landry farm. And then he said, Jacob is a happy little boy. So that's sort of our tease going into the next episode. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, so has she found her Jacob it is very, very, ooh, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. And both Alice and Kat end up in the water. So they both, and uh, so they both end up back. But uh, they go to the Goodwin estate where they had found the painting that looked like just like Cat. Mm-hmm. And they get the painting and they find the gun that had shot her. And uh, and so then uh, Dell is talking to Colton, imaginary conversation, says, don't let your pride get in the way like you did before. Mm. So... She's trying to let go of some of her land and, and different things like that. There's also this horse. And I guess it's supposed to be sort of symbolic of Colton, right? When she sees this wild horse. I feel like there's some, is the horse traveling? Like what's, what is. What, <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh, the horse time traveling. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Uh, that was my thought. I was like, where did the horse come from? What, what? What time period is this? Well, she says in the next episode, Alice asks, why didn't you have a horse if you love horses? And she says, well, we just never could, we never could make it happen. And and uh, we weren't horse, uh, we weren't, it, it was never able to happen, but she obviously loves horses. And again, that's very heartlandy, yeah. very heartlandy. And um, we find out that Kat is writing a book. And uh, so she's going to uh, be busy with that. And uh, Alice is debating whether to go and visit her dad, visit Brady. Brady's excited. Brady wants her to do this internship, gets all the stuff set up. And then she says, sorry, I can't go. And he's very upset. Which, why? Of course you could be. I want to see your your child. Um, And then, uh, and so then there's this, the 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 neighbor is uh is selling the land the and so that's part of the reason why Della is scrambling to try to figure out a new way to like pay for the land and alice uh hears that and thinks oh they're losing the farm and uh and so she gets upset and uh and then Dell gives alice the book and uh, this book and so we're going to see more of this book coming up um and i and they so alice says you made it sound like the journey is over but it wasn't and uh and then um or i or is that um and then let's see who is that this is the cat that says you wanted me to only love you i think Mm. but um and then i couldn't deal with colton's death so elliot is very upset um and then he says elliot says i couldn't deal with colton's death and he says you set out to fix it but you didn't you broke it so they have kind of a fight cat and elliot (laughs) it's like that's her dad and i get it i get it there's a lot of things going on Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) A lot of things happen. Yeah. I mean, I I do think that if you were there and you knew you had a way to go back and and save your brother, like it would you would it would be so hard not to jump. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's you so would hard not to jump. Do. I mean, it's such a, I I think it's the same, you know, it's kind of, again, similar to the butterfly effect. It's like, same thing I have a feeling Colton was doing was like, he was trying to go back to make things right for his family and mm-hmm. doing that. It set off a series of events yeah. that negatively impacted the lives of the people he loved. So he yeah. took the hit himself. And I think it's the same thing these characters are going to go through. It's that same kind of, but the pond has a lesson. Like, I- yeah, I mean, that's the scary part is that you don't know with, whether the pond's going to take you back to 1999 or just some other random place, or mm-hmm. if it's going to be 1814 or you have no idea. And so it's such a risk. Yeah. Yeah. The pond definitely is, is, you know, the puppet master in all mm-hmm. of this. Yeah. It's none of it's accidental. These times yeah. and places and happenings, like all of it is meant to lead them somewhere or teach them something or bring people together or, you know. Yeah. So then Kat is going back and she is calling out for Jacob and she just can't resist going back to 1814. I mean, and you don't know, like in 1814, he could be an old man. We just, you have no idea. Mm-hmm. You have no idea. Yeah. So that's the end of the episode. It's a pretty, it was a pretty decent episode. Um, I probably give this one like, mm, I give it like a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would even give, I thought it was solid. I'd give it an eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really am impressed with um, Alice's stepdad too, or Alice's dad too. <clears throat> stepdad. Alice's yeah. <clears throat> um, Cat's with Brady. Ed. Brady. Yeah. His, his, you know, the first season I feel like kind of showed him in a way that, that drew Alice away from him was like, oh, this is, mm-hmm. this is my dad maybe wasn't the nicest person. And then you see him in a little bit of a different light and he's kind of coming around as like, you know. Well, and I think it's kind of implied that he had an affair. Um, And uh, he was at the beginning, he was with this other woman, but then we never heard from them again, heard of her again. And then, you know, he did kiss Kat in the first season. So I don't know if they just won't do anything with that or if we're going to come to that, but uh, but once we got to know him as teen, you know, it's just like he becomes more of a fleshed out, you know, character. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest, to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. So the next episode is called When You Were Young. This is the Landry women and Elliot reflect on what it means to grow up as they hang on to memories from their younger days while accepting who they have become. So it starts out in 1814 and we find out that the little boy Jacob in 1814 is not our Jacob. He's Jacob Jr. is how he's listed on the cast. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we meet Elijah Landry. Uh, you are on my land after all. <laughs> uh, and it, it's always, especially when you meet these Landrys, how much do they know about the pond? Right. You know, probably not that much. I mean, people are shooting her and stuff like that. Yeah, but they wouldn't know that she's, they they wouldn't necessarily know. But I, it is, it's, it's certainly... They can, Elijah could know. Yeah, totally. The pond could have taken them anywhere. Totally. Yeah. And, uh, and so then we find out it's not the same Jacob. And then we have Alice. She gets offered this job to work as a waitress. And then we see her later on actually being a waitress. And she's absolutely atrocious at it. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> And I would also be terrible <laughs> at the job. So 
it's a hard job. I've yeah, done. very difficult. Very it difficult. Is, yeah, yeah. And and so then we find out that the fireplace, the uh, initials on the fireplace are E L and R L. So what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Which Landry's? Well, we have Elijah. Is it Elijah Landry? Mm-hmm. Or you know who is it? E L and R L mm-hmm. on the fireplace stones. What's going on there? And it kind of makes me laugh because. Like uh, Heather Conkle, she must just have something with oh, fireplace stones because you know, on in Heartland, that they have this whole thing where they name different stones on the fireplace after it's kind of like their version of a christening ceremony. That when somebody's new into the family, marriage by marriage or birth, then they give them they go through this. They have this whole thing with the fireplace. So <laughs> they even brought it in here, <laughs> tying it tying it in. It's a little. Yes. Like- it's a little Easter egg. And so Alice announces to everybody, we're about to lose the farm. She's there at the farmer's market, basically. And uh, and every and Stell's like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> she seems oddly calm about it. Like, yeah. I don't know if she knows something else or but I don't know. She seems well, she's like, no, we're not going to lose the farm because she has this whole other strategy. So she's not really feeling panicked about yeah. it. Yeah. It seems like. And uh, Elijah is whistling this song that Jacob loved. How do you know? Like, how does he know the song? Mm-hmm. Jacob teach him the song? You know what is going on there? Did Elijah teach Jacob the song? Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we find out that Jacob's on a ship. And we also, so there's this woman, Susanna. And she's holding a cat uh, by knife. And she's pretty threatening. And it turns out she is Jacob's betrothed. So now we know that at least in 1814, Jacob is a young man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's interesting. I'm still trying to figure out, though, how, what is it? The Goodwin estate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out where that Mm -hmm. ties in, where like that family ties in to yeah, because they have the painting that looks just like Cat, and it says my, I think it says my Catherine or something like that on the painting, yeah. and it says eighteen fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, so there's there, I, but I can't figure out how. I can't figure out how, but I think yeah. there's going to obviously be a connection with them in eighteen fourteen that's going to lead us to present day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and then we have. Uh, the uh, she dives in the pond and she tells Elliot I found him he's alive uh, and uh, even though he wasn't with us he was with Landry's and uh, and then she says why is there Jacob not in the family almanac mm-hmm. so what is happening oh my I gosh. think they know I think they know I think there's there's some they have to know did time travel and that it's going to affect the mm-hmm. future. And I think that's why, like maybe they yeah. know he's from the future. So they meet Evelyn Goodwin's granddaughter, Casey and Casey ends up starting to work for cat as an intern. Mm-hmm. She's cute. She's a cute character. I think. Is she a time traveler too? Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't know their connection. If there is blood, do we know that there's there's no connection between the Goodwins and the Landrys as far as blood, right? No, no. <laughs> I mean, we know there's a connection in the past, right? I mean, or at least we're assuming there is. Yeah, there's, there's something. Oh my so gosh. what? How much does she know about mm-hmm. this situation? Like, did she come there to seek out Cat? Is she related? Mm-hmm. There. What is it? So Cat uh, has a age progression rendering done of Jacob. So that's going to be interesting to see how that compares with the Jacob they find in 1814. Ah. Yeah. And, uh, and then Elliot says, when you care about the time traveler, you find a way to be there for them. So he's coming around. He's not as bitter as in the last episode. Yeah. He's still on shaky ground though. I- and he says, I always said I do anything for a Landry woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All of yeah. them. Yeah. All of them. 
So yeah. this is when Alice gets the job. And like I said, she's absolutely atrocious at it. She's spilling, she spills all over Casey. And I, I don't know the, the kid's name, but I feel like we're going to see that guy again who he, he was like, well, at least it wasn't chilly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The boy, yeah. the cute the boy. boy. Yeah. yeah, cute boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He might, he's a, definitely a potential love interest. Love it. Yeah. Because uh, she needs to get over um, Nick. Yes. She really needs to. Because yeah. he's in another timeline. Uh, yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. <laughs> and so then we have Elliot. He has a vision of Teen, teen Elliot and Teen Cat, who I think this was the first we've seen of Teen Cat. This okay. season, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Okay. Yeah. We haven't seen much of that actress uh, okay. going on, but uh, he has this vision. You're part of the family, whether you want to be or not, which I thought was kind of telling. He's not by blood, mm -hmm. but, you know, I wonder if we ever will get to the point where the pawn takes him somewhere. He's part of the family. He's involved. He, yeah. yeah. Or, or, I mean, we, he and Kat are destined to be together. Yeah. They obviously have always been. It's just that their journey, they have to find their way home to each other. Well, you wonder, so there, I wonder if what would be Elliot's motivation for even for time traveling? Because he sees how messy it's making everything. But I think that if Kat was truly stuck there, I mean, he says, when you care about the time traveler, you find a way. So if he, if she was really stuck there, then or, that might be motivation for him. Or, you know? or just in, in like the fact of like, if they can't change it, then he will like, he, like there's nothing he wouldn't do for a Landry woman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if it he, would be very hallmarky if like you could only, the, the lake will only, I mean, the pond will only take you. If you have like a pure heart or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Be like There's definitely going to be a catch there. There's mm -hmm. definitely going to be a catch there. Yeah. Because yeah. it hasn't always taken Alice. Mm -hmm. There was that one time yeah. when it didn't. Yeah. And so then uh, we have, um, let's see here. Let's see here. Part of the family, whether you're not. Um, and so then... So Jacob built the, we find out that Jacob built the lighthouse in the town. So that's kind of a big reveal. Yeah. He's a sailor, I guess. And so that's interesting. And, uh, and then, um, Kat says, I wanted you to love me differently than family to Elliot. Yeah. And then uh, Elliot says, you're the family I never had. And then, so Kat apologizes and she says, I'm sorry. That I put you through all this. So. Elliot but, has a lot to work through. Yeah. I mean, but I can understand because it is, I mean, especially to lose a child and then also lose your father. Like those, that's tough, man. And if you could go back and, and like have a chance of that not happening, who wouldn't do it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. And who, and who wouldn't do it for the people that they love? Yeah. You know? And so then Del rides this, this horse bare, bareback mm -hmm. saddleback. And, uh, and so, um, and then we see the age progression drawing of Jacob and then Del meets this guy, Sam Bishop. So we might be seeing more of him mm -hmm. going forward. Uh, I guess the horse is his horse. 
he says. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so then uh, Cat finds these pictures taped to the to the bottom of the table bookcase whatever that was yeah and uh, so i guess we're supposed to assume that those have been in there since 1999 i guess i was wondering about that too i was like they haven't deep clean yeah that's a long time to have those go unnoticed although if you're like consistently changing the past you know it would be like you know, there's a few time travel movies like mm-hmm. that. Where it's like we quickly put something yeah. in the thing and then all of a sudden it shows up 20 years mm-hmm. later. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, Alice is talking uh, to, I think it's to Elliot, she says that she hasn't made a pact and that and they don't be in a hurry to jump back in. Everything you knew about those kids we once were is going to change. What does he know? She had this vision of seeing like the bonfires and seeing all the everybody yeah. there and everything you knew about those kids we once were is going to change. Yeah. He's, something ha- the, he's definitely alluding to something major happening that's going to change her perception on. Yeah. On- it's very yeah. exciting. Yeah. All right. We did it. I would say this episode was a little b- better than the last episode so i'd give this one like an eight yeah yeah this was good i they're all pretty solid for they're me good I'm, yeah. I'm on the edge of my seat i, I can't <laughs> just pick i really am i'm on the edge of my seat yeah. for every episode waiting for the next one so i feel like this series as a whole just yeah. rates very high for me well let us know what you think of these two episodes we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section or on twitter and sorry where can people, where can people find you uh, uh, you can find me on Twitter at ask underscore Sari, and then I am on Instagram at the savvy scribbler. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure you're following the podcast, the Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all over social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars. That really helps us a lot. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is a great way to be part of the podcast and support the podcast. And we talk about each episode as they air. So please check out the Patreon group and we have our merch store. And uh, so thanks so much, Sarah. This was so much fun. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye.